like they're sitting on a steeple, keeping all their own excited to be here today. We're excited for our celebration service. We are celebrating Jesus always, and today especially we're celebrating our moms. We are so grateful for all of our mamas, for our future mamas, for our bonus mamas, and for our spiritual mamas today. So we say happy Mother's Day. We celebrate you. We just welcome you, and um, we're just excited you're here. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, church. Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and we do uh, celebrate the women here in our midst today, Lord. We know they mean so much to us. And uh, Father God, we just uh, pray that you'll commune with us uh, here today, Lord. We know it's been a difficult week for many of our people, Lord. They've lost uh, family, lost loved ones, friends of many years. And uh, Lord, we just pray, Lord, they'll just hold on to those memories, Lord. We pray for those here today who no longer have their, their earthly mamas. And, uh, Lord, we just pray that they'll just cherish uh, those memories here today, Lord, in hopes that one day they'll be reunited with them, Lord, in heaven and glory. Father God, uh, I pray that you'll just eliminate distractions here this morning, Lord, that we would just be able to focus on you, your word, Lord, that you would just push out doubt and uh, uh, pride, and, uh, Lord, just allow us to focus on you. Lord, fill this place with your presence, Lord. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, it is good to see you here this morning, church. Uh, we just welcome you to our community celebration service. If it is your first time with us, just welcome. Uh, we just uh, pray that you'll enjoy yourself. Just worship the Lord freely with us uh, this, this morning. Uh, if it is your first time, if you have a few moments after service, we know it's a busy day, come up, introduce yourself. We would love to get a gift in your hands this morning uh, in regards to, to being here uh, today. 
I'd like to go over a number of announcements here this morning. First off, as always, men in prayer. Uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, guys, come on out. Uh, let's let's uh, pray for the needs of our families, the community, and the church at large. Also remember, uh, Hope Seekers Youth Ministry is no longer meeting on Wednesday nights with the exception of our, of our teen group. Uh, meeting at, on Wednesdays at 6.15, lasting to about 7.30, 7.45. Just heard great feedback from last week. So come on out, uh, you guys that are uh, uh, in, in that teenage group and be a part uh, of that ministry as it goes on this summer. Also, uh, H2EB, uh, which is our hope to end bullying, uh, will be having a, a will be participating in a in an event uh, this Saturday down at Veterans Park in Mount Airy. Uh, they're going to be selling their uh, newly designed T-shirts to raise uh, money for future events. And you can help with this event uh, by number one, volunteering your time that day, and uh, and number two, providing individually wrapped baked goods that they can sell there at their booth on this kindness event. Again, that'll be taking place in Veterans Park. Shaska has a few words that she would like to share with you guys uh, in regards uh, to that ministry. You're good, you're good. Good morning. Um, this morning we were going to get up here and we were going to give you all a bunch of statistics about bullying, bullying awareness things like that, but we're going to do something different. Um, we want to tell you a little bit about H2EB, but we are going to do an experiment real quick. So, um, with that being said, <laughs> the first question we have for y'all, well, actually, sorry, let me do this. I'm going to give y'all a definition. I want you to think about that definition when we ask you these questions. The definition is bullying, and this is what it says. To be verbally or physically cruel, overbearing, or intimidating with the intention to harm someone else. So take a look at that. If you are here today and you are a child, 18 or under, and if you have ever experienced bullying in any shape or form, someone's been verbally or physically cruel to you, um, intimidating, trying to cause you harm in any of those ways, I want you to stand up. And remember, we're in church, so you got to tell the truth. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can have a seat. Now, again, we're in church, so you got to tell the truth. If you are an adult, 18 or older, and at any point in your life, whether as a child or as an adult, have ever experienced these things, then please stand up. Thank you. Y'all can have a seat. So as y'all can see, that's a lot of people that, is, that are affected. It's not just children. It's adults as well. Um, and that is why H2EB was formed. H2EB was formed so that hopefully one day we'll be able to eliminate that altogether, and that's our prayer. Um, H2EB was formed a couple years ago by Miss Addie Hill, um, and with the help and support of the church, we've been able to do events, um, spread awareness, uh, help with prevention. We've done several events here at the church, um, and you all have helped in so many ways um, and one of those ways that you all helped and you did you may not have even knew were the shirts that you all just ordered so those shirts are in support of h2eb and that's why we designed them because we want to get the word out about h2eb and what it means um, also as anthony mentioned um, the vincent puckett memorial kindness event is next saturday may 14th um, it's from 10 to 3, I believe, 9 to 3, sorry. And um, we are in desperate need of volunteers. We need volunteers, children, and adults to help with that event, um, to help. We're going to have a baked goods booth, so we need volunteers for that. Um, and we also have promised um, Carrie and Roxanne, who are Vincent's parents, 
that we would also provide them with volunteers for their Kindness Rocks booth. So if you all can, we ask that you please come out and support these our youth, um, the future of our church, and thank you. Thank you. As Shaska mentioned, this event is to honor Vincent. Vincent took his life as a result of bullying, bullying as a teenager and also to raise awareness uh, and to bring kindness to our community. So uh, if you can help, uh, please see Shaska before you leave today. If you want to provide some baked goods, uh, drop them off here to church uh, this coming Friday because the event is Saturday, again, from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock down at Veterans Park in Mount Airy. As I mentioned last week, uh, this coming Saturday at 5 o'clock, we're going to be having a superhero appreciation dinner. This is for all the adults that helped the last nine months with our Hope Seekers Youth Ministry. If you are here and you helped in some capacity there, I'm going to ask that you get signed up at the welcome table this morning. Uh, Travis and I are going to be serving you a dinner again next Saturday at 5 o'clock. So if you plan on attending, get signed up today so that we have enough food on hand uh, to feed you guys and to recognize you. Uh, for the sacrifice that you have made uh, for the next generation. So just remember that here this morning. Also, the Stand with Bentley motorcycle ride and event is, is approaching fast. It is Saturday, uh, May 21st. This event will be here at the church from 9 o'clock uh, to 5 o'clock. I think the motorcycle ride will take place at 11. Uh, we'll have vendors, uh, food vendors, bikes, face painting, live music, and more. Come out, be a part of that as we raise money uh, for a young fella that has suffered a stroke as as a child and is in need of a wheelchair as well as raise funds uh, for our future playground uh, in the back. Also remember on Sunday, May 22nd, here in a couple of weeks at 2 o'clock, we're going to be having a baptism. Uh, again, that baptism is at our normal spot. If you go south on 52, uh, once you hit the four lane, you'll see Dollar General on the right. You'll turn there at Dollar General, go down to the bottom of the hill, and there's a church located on the right. I think right now we have uh, 10 or 11 candidates, and if that is something you want to be a part of, absolutely. We are excited. The Lord is just moving in all phases of the church, moving in y'all's lives. We're excited about what's taking place there. So just see me if baptism is something the Lord is laying on your heart uh, here this morning. Also, on Memorial Day weekend, on Friday, May 26th, and, and uh, Saturday, May 27th, here at the church, we're going to be having a yard sale. Uh, this is an opportunity, guys, for you to unload as you're doing some of that spring cleaning, some of those items that you no longer uh, need. We're going to have specific drop-off dates for those items. Uh, the first is this coming Saturday from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock here at the church. If you have items you want to drop off, uh, pull back here to the loading dock, and there will be someone here to help you unload those items and place them in the warehouse. Again, this coming Saturday is the first one uh, from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock, so just remember that. Also, as I mentioned last week, the May emphasis for the Operation Christmas Child is uh, pillowcases and cups. And the pillowcases, we intend to turn them into dresses for, for uh, uh, girls age, ages 2 to 5 or 6. Uh, so just as you're out and about, if you're shopping, if you find some decorative or decorative uh, pillowcases, uh, purchase a few of those, drop them off at the welcome table, and we're going to turn those into dresses uh, for, for children overseas. So we're excited uh, about that. I think that's just a tremendous idea. Uh, I think that does it for our announcements this morning. Uh, the prayer list continues to stay very, very long. Uh, a number of individuals we'd like to add here this morning. Uh, first, uh, Reggie Smith. Uh, this is a young lady that suffered a dog attack and is going to have to have multiple surgeries uh, uh, to address all the issues that she is facing. So just remember her. Again, her name is Reggie Smith. Also, would like to add Avery Sweat back to the prayer list. This is the nine-year-old that uh, received a heart transplant uh, a couple months back. She's having some other issues. I think cancer has come, come about, and uh, 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 she's on morphine and a lot of pain. Uh, so she is in need of our prayers here this morning. Again, her name is Avery Sweat, nine years old. Um, uh, uh, Pat McCraw, uh, many of you may know Pat was in the hospital this week with some breathing issues. She's back at home, but we do ask that you remember uh, uh, Pat uh, here this morning. Um, the Ed Edward Phillips family, this is a friend of, of Dennis Mitchell's that uh, passed away unexpectedly, I think Friday. So I know he's grieving that loss here this morning, but we ask that you remember that family and specifically his wife, uh, Janet, here uh, this morning. Uh, 
Uh, also, uh, uh, Jared's mother, uh, uh, Kathy Quartz, uh, is having, uh, she has a detached retina, and they'll be addressing that on Tuesday. She's got some bleeding going on. Uh, they'll be going up to West Virginia on Tuesday and, be, and uh, help her through that, that time of surgery. So just remember her as well. Again, all these announcements, the prayer list, the outline for the sermon is, is all on our Hope to You app. If you haven't downloaded that app, please do so today. That'll keep you connected uh, to the church. If there's any others that need to be added to the prayer list, just see me before you leave here this morning. At this time, I'm going to ask that we stand and worship our Lord and Savior.
the heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever God you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory.
a seat. Pray with me a minute. Father God, we are grateful that you hold on to us in the middle of the storm. Thank you, Lord, for your promises, for the promise you spoke in your word, and for the promises you're still speaking to our hearts today. Lord, we're grateful that we can worship you this morning. Amen.
for this next special, um, this young lady I'm kind of partial to. Uh, Y'all welcome Miss Bailey as she comes to sing this morning. absolutely beautiful
Thank you, Bailey. I think that is the perfect lead-in uh, for what we're going to do before we get to the sermon. And uh, we all have the uh, special opportunity uh, uh, to participate in a baby dedication this morning. In a day and time in which abortion activists are protesting the lives of children, here at Hope, we're going to celebrate the lives of our children. <clears throat> and today we have three families uh, who desire to dedicate their children to the Lord. So as I uh, call your name, I'm going to ask that you come up and stand and face uh, this congregation of people. Uh, first, we have uh, Brandon and Shaska Hill, and they are bringing with them their daughter, Lydia Tilly Jade Hill. Next, we have Hunter and Chantel Swanpole, and wrangling with them is their daughter, Allie Jean Swanpole. And finally, this morning, we have uh, Corey and Jordan Thompson, and they're bringing their son, Michael Bo Thompson, here before us. There we go. The Lord says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning in verse 6, And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and you shall diligently teach them to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. Here the Lord commands us as parents to diligently raise our children in the faith, uh, to raise them in accordance to his statutes and his commandments. And in obedience to that command, these parents are bringing their children before us here today in order to present them to the Lord. And this is a precedent that is found throughout the scriptures. Uh, in the Old Testament, we find Hannah presenting and dedicating Samuel to the Lord. Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, we read how Mary and Joseph traveled to Jerusalem in order to present Jesus to the Lord there in the temple. Uh, so this is a ceremony that originates from the Scriptures. Uh, Paul even reminded Timothy that from a child he had known the Holy Scriptures. And he knew the Scriptures because we're told that his mother and his grandmother diligently taught them to him. They passed down the faith to Timothy at a very young age and in the process of time this man became a pastor at Ephesus Jesus himself considers the little ones infinitely precious and he says permit the little children to come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these uh, today we are dedicating these little ones these precious ones before the Lord but the purpose and really the responsibility of a baby dedication is really found in the parents. When rightly understood, this ceremony is one of parental dedication. These parents are pledging themselves to obey the commandment of Paul when he says, Do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up, raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This ceremony is meaningless today unless these parents dedicate themselves as well as their children to the Lord on high. So this is a very serious commitment that is taking place here before us, a very serious commitment on behalf of these parents, a very serious commitment on behalf of this church. So I would like to begin by addressing the parents by asking a series of questions. Do you as parents of these children... Understand that the vows that you are about to take are binding before God as long as these children are under your care and under your counsel. If you understand the magnitude of what is about to take place, I ask you to respond by saying, we do. Will you as parents promise before God and these people that you will strive to raise these children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, that you will instruct them in the teaching of the Bible 
If so, respond by saying, we will. Will you teach them to have reverence and respect for the church and its work? Instilling in them their responsibility to serve faithfully in a local assembly of believers. If so, respond by saying, we will. Will you instruct them in the way of holiness and live a life that will, will be an example for them to follow? If so, please say, we will. Will you teach them to pray and show, you, show them the value of prayer? If so, say, we will. Will you seek to lead them to an early encounter with God? If so, say, we will. At this time, I'm going to address the church by asking you two questions. And afterwards, if you agree, I'm going to ask that you stand with these parents. Do you as individuals who affiliate with this church promise to join these parents in the teaching and training of these children in order that in due time they may trust Christ as their Lord and Savior? Do you as a congrega congregation promise to pray for and support these families as they go forth in this wonderful yet uncertain time in their lives? If so, please stand. Then as much as you have made this covenant with Almighty God and before this people, we're now going to present and dedicate these children to the Lord. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this service of dedication. And we ask your blessing upon these children and upon these parents. May they be children who grow up to be a people after your own heart. I pray that you will lead them in the way that you would have them to go. And when they encounter trials and tribulations, and we know that they will, we pray that they will always turn to you and help in times of trials and tribulation. Lord, I pray that they will live a life that is set apart, completely different than the world in which we live. Lord, we pray for their health this morning. We pray that they will always be healthy and happy from childhood to adulthood. I pray that they will be an asset to the community in which, way, in which they live and, and serve faithfully in a local church like you've asked all of us to do. They are precious to their parents. They're precious to their grandparents, their families. They're precious to this church. But most of all, Lord, they're precious to you. And now we are committing them into your hands so that you may always keep them into the center of your will. God, this morning we dedicate these little ones, these precious ones, to you. And we pray all these things in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we are going to present each family with a, a frame certificate. And I appreciate Myra for filling those out uh, because you cannot read my handwriting. Uh, <laughs> They're also going to be uh, getting a blanket that was embroidered by Frances Brown. Frances and Terry are unable to be with us today, but we thank her for that. On one corner, you're going to find your child's name. On the other corner, you're going to find the words of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they shall not depart from it. And we pray that for you guys here this morning. Let's give these families a round of applause here today. You guys can go on and be seated. And hopefully this fall we're going to be having another one of these. Uh, so I told uh, these families that they were kind of the guinea pigs today. I'm trying to get some structure uh, with as many babies as we have coming uh, just uh, to make life a little simpler for us. Uh, but we are excited by what the Lord is doing here at the church with our children, with our, uh, from, from, from infant all the way up to 18. We are excited by what's taking place. At this time, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our children to the back for their lesson. And while they're doing so, I'm going to ask that you take your Bibles and turn to the 78th Psalm here this morning.
Psalm 78, and here in just a few moments, we're going to be looking at the first eight verses. And I'm going to be brief this morning. I'm mindful that many of you no doubt have plans to be with your families this afternoon, and I want to honor those plans. I want that for you. Uh, But before we leave here today, I want to give us a few things to think about uh, over not only the week to come, but the weeks to come. Uh, Now, last week, Travis uh, preached on the hope that we have in the next generation. And in light of that sermon and in light of this uh, ceremony and uh, the focus that we've put on our children over the last few weeks and will continue to do so next week, I think it's only appropriate to look at our responsibility to the next generation. Uh, As Travis mentioned last week, we are failing the next generation. We are failing our children and our grandchildren. And that's the case because we are not fulfilling our responsibilities as followers of Christ. We're told in Psalms 127 verse 3 that children are a heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is His reward. Children are a heritage from the Lord. That word heritage is interesting. It It literally means to be assigned by God. Children are assigned by God to each one of us as parents. As parents, our children have been assigned to us, but make no mistake, this morning, our children and our grandchildren are first and foremost God's. He has just placed them under our care for a brief season. And as parents and grandparents and as guardians, we have many roles when it comes to to raising our children. But our primary role above all else is to serve as spiritual guardians over the souls of our children and our grandchildren. And because you associate with this fellowship of believers, your children are placed within this community foster care system known as the church. That is one of the many functions, the many roles of the church. In God's design, He intends for the local church to play a vital role in raising your children and watching over their spiritual well-being. And we take that very serious here at the church. And it's all for one reason. And that reason is this, so that we would raise God-ordained, Christ-exalting, kingdom-advancing children. That is what God is looking for. That is what He expects out of us as parents and out of us as a community of believers. Again, He expects us to raise up a generation that is God-ordained, Christ-exalting, and kingdom-advancing. That's when you know. That's when you know you've been successful as a parent, as a grandparent, and as a church body. And in order to achieve this, it takes all of us doing certain things both within the home and within the context of the church. And this morning I want us to briefly look at our responsibility to the next generation and why the Lord is seeking this from us. So read with me if you will here in Psalm 78 beginning in verse 1. The Lord says give ear. Listen O my people to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. For He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which He commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments, and might not be as their fathers, as this generation, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit is not steadfast on God. Let us pray. 
Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for our children. Lord, we thank you for our grandchildren, what they mean to us. Lord, we thank you for this ceremony that's taking place, Lord, the care that you have found us responsible here at the church to take care of these many kids that come out, not only on Sunday, but on Wednesday nights. And Lord, I pray that you'll show us this morning as parents, as a church body, our responsibility to not only our, our personal children, but Lord, the children of this church, the children of this community. Father God, I pray that we would take it seriously, Lord, that we would see your word, that we would see what you would desire from all of us. Lord, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Now, to begin with this morning, I want us to look at our responsibility to the next generation. And our responsibility is fourfold, according to our verses here today. And their first and foremost responsibility is to declare the preeminence of God to the next generation. We're told here in the middle of verse 4 that we will declare to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and the wonderful works that He has done. This is our first and foremost responsibility to the next generation. We are, to be, we are to be declaring that our God is preeminent. That He is to always be first place in their lives. And, and anything less than that is idolatry. Christian parenting and Christian education begins and ends with God. And not just any God, but the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we should be declaring Him to the next generation. It is our responsibility to teach our children that the Lord is to supersede anything or anyone else in our lives. And anything less than that, they need to know it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable in the eyes of God. He is to be the preeminent and central figure that their whole world, their whole life revolves around. And we're told here in verse 4 that we can show the next generation the preeminence of God if we would simply declare His praises, declare His strength, and declare His wonderful works that He has accomplished for all of us. We are to be declaring His greatness as, as revealed to us throughout the Scriptures. But not only that, we are to be declaring the, the wonderful works that he's, he's done in each of our lives. It is our responsibility to make sure that God is the central figure in the lives of our children and our grandchildren. So it begins with God. The next generation needs to understand that their lives are to be built upon Jesus Christ, the rock, and nothing else. And everything else is sinking sand. And not only are their lives to be built upon God, but their lives are to be shaped by God. He is the potter, and, and they are the clay. And they are to be submissive to the Father's hand. So if there's one memory that our children and our grandchildren should carry with them out into this world as, as they mature to adulthood, it is this. God is always to be first. God is always to be first. And it is our responsibility to plant that in the heart of our children from a very young age. Secondly, it is our responsibility to establish the absolute authority of the Bible. Look again at what we're told in verse 5. We're told that God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. And today we hold this testimony, we hold this law in our hands in the form of the Bible. The Bible is the way of God. It reveals God to us with clarity and, and authority. Within it we find His will. We find what is acceptable and unacceptable in the eyes of our Creator. It is absolute truth without any mixture of error. And we must establish that reality in the minds of our children and our grandchildren. We must understand, or they must understand, exactly what it is they're holding in their hands. They must understand that what they're holding in their hands is the very words of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, and for reproof, and for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. If God is more important than anything, then the Bible is to be more important than anything but God. That's how that works. 
And we've got to instill that truth in our children. The Bible is God's revelation to each one of us. Therefore, it can be trusted, and its words are designed to to give us life so that we can enjoy life, not to hold us back, not to prevent us from living. It is designed so that we would have life, and, and life more abundantly, not only in the world to come, but in this world as well. That's what eternal life is. In church, we have two responsibilities when it comes to the Bible as it relates to the next generation. First, we are to be guarding and protecting it. We're told in 2 Timothy chapter 1, beginning in verse 13, Hold fast the form of sound words, which you have heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing. What is that good thing? The Word of God, which was committed unto you. Keep it, guard it by the Holy Spirit which, which dwells in us. We are to fight and guard God's Word from those seeking to destroy it and dismiss it. And that's becoming increasingly difficult. In this day and time in which we live, everyone wants their ears tickled. Everyone is under the impression that somehow their opinion supersedes the declarations of God. Therefore, we must fight for it and guard the very words of this book. And we do that in order to preserve it and pass it down to the next generation. That is our responsibility to establish the authority of Scripture in the minds of our children. Let them see us fight for it and guard these words. Let them see us protect it and then let them see us pass it down to their children so that they'll do the same for theirs. Thirdly, it is our responsibility, parents, grandparents, body of the church, to model the Christian life before them. We're told at the beginning of verse 4 that we are not to hide what we've heard and known and know from our children. This is perhaps where we are failing the next generation the most. We're not modeling. We're not living out the Christian life before our children and our grandchildren. Sure, we walk around and we claim that God is preeminent, that He's first place in our life, but we don't give Him an hour on Sundays. We even say His Word has authority. Yet we don't read it. We don't live out our lives as if that were true. And do you know what you're doing when you behave in this superficial, hypocritical manner? You're hiding God's testimony. You're hiding God's truth from your children. From your children. You're preventing Him and His glory from being on full display. You're concealing the truth from them. And again, this is done in any number of ways. It's done by simply not declaring or coming to the church. You declare the preeminence of God above all else, yet you refuse to honor Him on Sunday morning. Again, for an hour. And you're hiding His glory. You're hiding His truth from them. You claim that knowing the Word of God is important, but you don't even take the time to bring them to church on Wednesday night so that they can hear it. You're concealing it from them. You allow other things to take precedence. And they're not necessarily bad things. Just God gets pushed to the fringes. He's not first. And do you know what your children are doing as all this is playing out? They're watching. They're watching. And they see that none of this is really important because it doesn't carry much weight to you if it's of no value to you then why should it be of any value to them believers we must model the Christian life we must we must stop hiding and concealing God and his word through through our hypocritical actions our hypocritical lifestyles You're doing more harm than you are good, not only to the church, the name of Christ, but to your own children. 
That's our responsibility to the next generation this morning. We need to stop all this talk about being a Christ follower and start being a Christ follower. We need to clearly leave it, live out our faith before the next generation. Clearly live it out. And finally, it is our responsibility this morning to instruct the next generation in the testimony and teachings of our Lord. Again, we're told in verse 5 that God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded to our fathers that they should make them known to their children. It's not enough this morning to guard and, and, and preserve the truth of this book. It's not enough to tell them it's there. It's not enough to, to tell them to go to church. No, we must make God's commandments and His statutes known to the next generation. We're told in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, And fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in the discipline and instruction of God. We are to be instructing, teaching the next generation the testimony and, and the principles that are found within this book. And we're to do that and keep doing that until they come to the correct knowledge of the truth. And that's crucial. We don't want our children coming to just any knowledge. We want our children coming to the correct knowledge of the truth. See, so there's a lot of teaching being done in a lot of so-called churches in our day and time. But what is being taught is not correct. It's not in accordance to, to Scripture. It's contrary to the Word of God. Anything that's not consistent with the Word of God is nothing less than heresy. And unfortunately, most people today prefer to have their ears tickled and be led to the slaughter than to hear the truth and follow the straight and narrow that leads to life. It is our responsibility to instruct the next generation in the testimony and teaching of the Lord, regardless of how unpopular it may become. And it's becoming unpopular. But we must hold to it. And we must teach it so that the next generation will come to a correct knowledge of the truth. This is our responsibility, parents, grandparents, church. We are to declare the preeminence of God, establish the absolute authority of Scripture, model the Christian life, and instruct the next generation until they come to the correct knowledge of the truth. But why? Why? Why has God laid this responsibility on us? Well, it's simple. He has given us this responsibility so that the next generation would become the people that He would have them to be. That's the reason. And there are certain things that God wants for our, our children and our grandchildren. There's, there's certain things this morning that God wants for all of us. First, He wants them to put their confidence in Him. We're told at the beginning of verse 7 that we are to be doing these things so that our children might set their hope in God. That's what we all want, isn't it? That's what we all want. That our children would put their hope in Christ so that they, like us, would have assurance of heaven. So that we would not only spend this life with them, but so that we could spend all of eternity with them, right? That's the desire of our hearts. And this is the desire of God's heart. This is what He wants for the next generation. He wants our children and our grandchildren to put their, their confidence in Him. He doesn't want any to perish. That's God's desire. That all would come to repentance and have a home in heaven and eternal life. And not only does He want the next generation to put their confidence in Him, but it is His desire that they live a life of obedience. And I know some of you are bristling and Bucking at the idea of being obedient, especially in this age of grace we live in. But that's what God's seeking. That's what God's seeking from us, and that's what God is seeking from the next generation. Look again at what we're told in verse 7. We're told that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. That's what God is looking for. 
He's looking for a generation that will live a life of obedience, not just talk about it. We're told in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29, oh, that they would have such a heart in them. Listen to God beg and plead and cry here, that they would have a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. That's why we need to be obedient. So things would go well with us and our children and our grandchildren forever. Forever. This is what God wants for the next generation. He's seeking a generation that will be obedient to all of His commands. Again, outward obedience is a sign of, of an inward love for God. Jesus says, if you truly love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you truly love me, you'll be obedient to my word. The love for Christ is manifested through obedience to God's word. And the Lord is asking us to fulfill our responsibility this morning in order that the next generation would not only love Him, but obey Him. Amen. Thirdly, the Lord is asking us to fulfill our responsibility so that the next generation would be different. From this generation. If you want things to be different for your grandchildren and, and children this morning, I think we all do. It's not going to happen by getting more involved in politics. It's not going to happen by joining some organization or some social movement of our day. It's only going to happen if we start fulfilling our responsibility as believers. God is looking for something completely different than what He's getting out of this generation. We're told here in verse 8 that we are to do these things so that the next generation may not be like their fathers, so that the next generation may not be like us, a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that has not set their heart aright, whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Doesn't those words describe this generation? To a T? And God's word doesn't apply to us today. We are living among a generation that is stubborn and rebellious. Both inside and outside the church, I've never seen such stubbornness and rebellion among professing believers. We are a generation whose hearts are not right with God. If they were right with God, we'd not be in the situation we are as a country. We're a generation that's not steadfast. A generation that is not reliable, that's not faithful. Isn't that what we see? We see a whole generation of professing believers who are anything but faithful. Yet they profess it. They're not faithful to God. They're not faithful to His Word. They're not faithful to the church. They're not faithful to, to, to anything except their own will. And God's looking for something different. Something different for the next generation. And He'll get something different if we'll start fulfilling our responsibility, church. If we'll start fulfilling our responsibility as parents and grandparents, God wants something different than what He's getting. And finally, this morning, we are to fulfill our responsibility so that our children would do the same thing for their children. We're told in verse 6 that the generation to come might know the words of God, even the children, children which should be born, who should arise and declare His words to their children. This is how the kingdom expands. This is how the faith is passed down from one generation to another generation to another generation by fulfilling our responsibility. And I pray this morning that this generation is not the link that causes the chain to break because I see the, the link starting to, to be under tremendous stress. It's starting to fail. And it's up to us to stop it. The church is the last stronghold in our day and time before the whole system comes to an end. We're the only reason it's still here. 
the church. Church, we must fulfill our responsibility to the next generation so that they would be God-ordained, Christ-exalting, and kingdom-expanding. This is what God expects from this generation, and this is what God expects, expects out of the next generation. But again, it's up to us. We've got to declare to them the preeminence of God, establish the absolute authority of Scripture, model the Christian life before them every day, and instruct the next generation until they come to a correct knowledge of the truth. And if we do that, our children and our grandchildren will be individuals that are confident in God. They'll live a life that is obedient to His Word. They will be different than this generation, and then they'll pass it down to the next generation. Parents, Grandparents, Hope Community Church, I pray today that we start fulfilling our responsibility as believers. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and Lord, we thank you for the wise counsel that you give us. Lord, that we don't have to be seeking here and there for the truth, Lord. You give us wisdom and knowledge in all aspects of life, including raising our children. And Lord, I pray that our eyes are open this morning. Lord, because if we search our hearts and are honest, there's aspects in our lives that we're all failing, things that we're getting right, things that we're struggling with. But Lord, we are to be guardians over the souls of our children. And Lord, I pray that you'd find us faithful in that aspect. Lord, we want to raise up a generation like, like David that is after your own heart. A generation that is different from this generation. A generation that is obedient. A generation that will pass your word down to their children and to their grandchildren. Lord, I pray for our generation. Lord, I pray for this nation. Lord, I pray this morning for those who are out demonstrating against life. Lord, I pray that you'd open their eyes. Lord, your word says that you knit these babies together in their mother's womb. How dare we take their life from them? Father God, I pray that your people will stand up and not only talk the talk, but walk it, Lord. That we'll model it in our everyday lives. So that you will get the glory. So that you will be preeminent. And so that our children and our grandchildren would come to save in faith in you. And that we would spend eternity with them and with you. Father God, that's what it's all about this morning. Again, Lord, find us faithful. Lord, we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. When I ask that we stand, we have a song of invitation. If you would like, the altar's open. If you'd like to come and pray over your children, if you'd like to come and pray over your grandchildren, I think today's the day to do it. They need our prayers. We need to be guarding them with our prayers as we listen to this song of invitation. Behind your 
regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar And the Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was born with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, what a Savior And he was 
Just want to thank all of you for uh, putting the Lord first this morning, allowing Him to be preeminent in your life. And I know when we're faithful in doing that, that He is faithful in return. He is faithful, <laughs> regardless of how unfaithful we, we become or get. Uh, God bless you for being here this morning. Congratulate these families on your way out. Encourage them. We know that they need it, and pray for them. And not only them, but all of uh, those here today that are raising uh, children and grandchildren. Uh, we just have a tremendous number of, of children and grandchildren here in our midst. We're just tre tremendously blessed as a church body. Uh, uh, remember, if you would like to help with H2EB, see Shaska before you leave here today. Remember, we, we need those baked goods by Friday. Uh, also, next week, you should be getting your, your T-shirts that you ordered a few weeks back, so we're excited about that as well. Uh, remember the baptism here in a couple of weeks. If that is something that the Lord has been speaking to you about, why don't you come? Let's talk. Uh, we just are, are excited by what God is doing. And I know there's those here among us with a congregation our size who need to make decisions for Christ and be baptized, okay? So if that is something, please see me before you leave here today. Let us close in prayer. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the ladies here this morning. Father God, we come to you today. And Lord, I pray that we leave here with clarity when it comes to our responsibility to our children and our grandchildren. And Lord, I pray that we just uh, keep these words in our heart. Lord, that you're seeking this generation that is, that is God-ordained, Christ-exalting, and kingdom-advancing. And Lord, I pray that we would raise up a generation here in this local assembly of believers that will do just that. Lord, I pray that these parents and these grandparents and these guardians will strive to do the same thing. Lord, that we're here. We're joining arm in arm with them. Lord, to raise them in your ways, to raise them in accordance to your word. Father God, I pray that you'd bless them. Lord, I pray that you'd bless every family here today. Those that are excited about Mother's Day, Lord, those who are heavy-hearted this morning. Lord, I pray that you would just heal hearts, change situations, move in circumstances. And Lord, that it may be all for your glory. Lord, we ask all these things because we believe it. Glorify the name of Christ. And it's in his name I pray. And God's people said, Amen. Sitting on a steep.